Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am going to show you 10 things that will destroy your Arduino. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do all 10 at once. During the video, I'm also going to give you a couple of tips to not destroy your Arduino. So before we get started, I want to make it clear that you should absolutely 100% not try this at home. As you can see, I'm on a silicone mat. I have a fire extinguisher handy. I have a face shield to protect in case these capacitors explode. I am ready uh, and willing to take the risk, but I'm asking you not to. Second thing I want to let you know is before people start complaining in the comments that I'm using a Mega, uh, Megas are actually less precious to me than regular Arduinos because I bought a ton of them when they were like $3 each, and so I have a lot more Megas than I do regular Arduinos. So to give you an idea of the setup, this thing has a bunch of even number pins on this side and odd number pins on this side. I have set all of these pins as output. These are putting out five volts. These are going to ground and I've set these pins over here as inputs. Otherwise, this is a basic Arduino not doing anything except for looping. So the first way to destroy an Arduino is to put more than 19 or 20 volts into this barrel jack. Now, in a perfect world, you'd put somewhere between 9 and 12 volts. And the reason for that is any extra voltage that you put in this jack has to be bled off by the regulator. In other words, it has to be turned into heat. So the more voltage you put in here, the harder the regulator has to work and the more heat you're going to generate. Once you get above 19 or 20 volts, you are in the danger zone. Also, you never want to go below 7 volts because the regulator needs enough voltage to make sure it can provide a steady 5 volts to the Arduino itself. So I figured that if 20 volts is the maximum, then 36 volts should have no problem blowing the Arduino up. Now, as I mentioned, each of these even number pins on this side are set to high, while the pins over on this side are set to ground. You never want to draw more than 40 milliamps, ideally 20 milliamps from each of these pins. And unlike my previous video where I used a red LED that drew very little current, I just tested one of these white LEDs and putting 5 volts into it, it could draw 180 milliamps. So that is way beyond what this thing is specced at. So if we put one of these in here, we stand a very good chance of damaging both the LED and the board. The third way to mess up your Arduino is to sync more than 200 milliamps of current across all the pins. So not only do you need to be concerned about how much you're drawing from an individual pin, but you care about how much current the entire Arduino is supplying to all the pins. So in this case, you don't want to do more than 200 milliamps. I feel like 10 LEDs ought to do it. The next thing you want to worry about is shorting two pins that are labeled as output because if this one happens to be high and this one happens to be low, you will cause a dead short. And this is one of the reasons that when I am done using an Arduino, if I take a project apart, I always go into the Arduino IDE and under the example sketches, there's one called bare minimum. And I always flash that sketch to the Arduino to make sure that there are no pins that are trying to write high at any given time because I don't want to accidentally short something out while I'm hooking up my next project. Next up on the list, you want to make sure that you don't hook an output pin up to ground. Otherwise, you will cause a short and mess up your Arduino. And number six, it is a really bad idea to take this VN pin and short it to ground. Don't ever do that. Some of the next ones involve putting voltage to the Arduino, so I thought that 19 volts would be a good amount of voltage to work with. You do not want to put more than 5 volts onto one of the input pins. Therefore, connecting 19 volts to an input pin is a terrible idea. One of the pins people don't talk about very often is this little reset pin. It's super handy. If you connect this to ground, your Arduino will reboot. Sometimes I'll use a relay or a transistor so that I can reboot the Arduino in software. So that reset pin is connected directly to the chip. So you don't want to connect any more than 13 volts to it. Therefore, connecting 19 volts is a bad idea. It's important to know that connecting other voltages to the 3.3 and the 5 volt pins will cause that to feed into the other devices that are plugged into your Arduino and will damage the chip as well. So connecting 19 volts to your 3.3 volt line is definitely not a good idea. 
And number 10 is that you definitely don't want to get this thing wet. And I'm not just talking about putting water on it. I'm talking about having condensation. This thing generates a little bit of heat. So if you have this in a non-temperature controlled environment, the heat could cause some of the air to condensate and could cause shorts on your Arduino. So what would happen if we did all 10 of these things at once? Well, maybe we'll do a little bit more of an autopsy on it. You can see there's some singeing on the voltage regulator and right down here. I thought this capacitor let the magic smoke out, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, either way, it's a total loss for the Arduino. And even if I were to replace these parts over here, I wouldn't trust that this other stuff would still work. So I stunk up my office and destroyed my Arduino. So hopefully you don't destroy yours. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.